So many a times we come across data with high dimensions. So what are the precautions to be taken when you deal with data with high dimensions? So what we mean by high dimension is that the number of predictor variables uh, are quite high in a data. So you have let's say you know uh, 100 uh, variables to choose from as predictors or maybe 1000 variables or 10,000 variables and so on. So uh, this is um, a typical example of high dimension and a number of um, modeling techniques are not suitable for high dimension data. And the way you, uh, you know, predict your uh, output, the way you interpret the results from your model is not quite so uh, what you do in low dimension. In low dimension, the uh, least square regression model works fine. But in high dimension, when p value is quite high, you will see that least square regression will most likely overfit. So the chances of overfitting is quite high if you are fitting a least square regression in a high dimension data. And remember, uh, when you are talking about uh, high dimension data, p is quite high. And sometimes p, which is the number of variables available to you uh, for use as predictors, is, is higher than even the number of observations or number of data points in your, in your data. Okay, so this is known as curse of dimensionality, uh, which is nothing but that if you have more number of predictor variables, then the chances of overfitting is quite high. Okay, now the conventional uh, knowledge tells us that uh, with higher number of predictor variables, um, you are likely to get a better model or a model which is going to uh, do the prediction um, better way, right? But um, if you increase after a certain point, if you keep on increasing and there is, uh, you know, uh, there is so many unimportant variables in your uh, data, then chances of overfitting actually increases over, over uh, you know, increase in number of predictor variables. So this is known as curse of dimen dimensionality that even though, you know, higher dimension is supposed to be, you know, better suited for modeling, uh, yet you might face issues and the biggest issue is uh, the chances of overfitting could go up, okay. So how do you deal with this? So the way you deal with high dimensional situations where chances of overfitting is quite high is first to use feature selection methodology. Um, you select uh, important features. Now what the feature selection methodology are? One could be subset selection, subset selection, uh, stepwise selection. You can also um, select variable based on the correlation with target variable and so on. So to more uh, to know more about feature selection, there is a video in the description. You can you can follow that video. You can also use shrinkage methodology. So shrinkage uh, is where you force some of the coefficients of not so important variables to be close to zero. So that's as good as uh, not having that variable in the model. So the importance given to a variable which is not very important or not uh, very relevant for the model is is close to zero. Um, and the famous ones are the regularized mo uh, regression models like lasso and ridge regressions, lasso and ridge. So you can you know eliminate a number of not important variable using lasso, and in ridge you can actually bring down the uh, coefficients of um, not so important variable to close to zero. That way you can handle. Another way could be uh, using dimen uh, dimension reduction techniques and the popular ones are uh, the uh, principal component analysis which actually combines uh, the correlated variables because when you have high P, when you have um, you know high dimension with large number of predictor variables most likely they will be correlated. So in that situation you can use principal component analysis to come up with a smaller set of variables by combining these variables okay and then you could also use partial least square regression pls um, so pls can partial least square can also be used which is uh, somewhat different from pca but does the same job it combines uh, the predictor variables and um, you know what it gives is composite variable which are 
completely different or linear combinations of the original set of variables so that from thousand variable let's say you can come down to let's say 10 most important composite variables that will do the same job what thousand variables are doing originally okay so that way you can handle so that was about model predictions if you don't use the such techniques you will likely to most likely to be dealing with uh, what is known as overfitting okay so ensure that we use uh, one of these three techniques to deal with overfitting okay and the way you would be confirmed will be by doing a cross validation with your test data or maybe uh, using resampling or bootstrapping techniques wherein you will see whether the error rate is consistent across you know different test sample or not otherwise it's difficult okay the question here is why can't we use least square regression or multiple linear regression when there is high dimension in that case you will see the error rate will be very biased error rate will be very very low okay but that won't be correct okay this will be surprisingly low in the training data set but would be very high in the test data set and that is an indication of overfitting okay and that's reason why we're not going to use multiple linear regression with the standard modeling technique in a high dimension and most of these techniques like linear simple linear regression multiple linear regressions are not suitable in high dimension okay so uh, the few other issues also and um, it it, uh, it actually affects the interpretability of the models now we talked about the predictability in the previous slide in the interpretability what also gets affected uh, in high dimension in high dimension there is you face issues called collinearity issue that means a number of variables will be very correlated among themselves okay and some of the variables can be expressed as linear combination of a set of variables set of other variables so if you have let's say thousands you know x variables from x1 to you know x thousand so one of these variable let's say one of these x variable can be represented as a linear combinations of another set of variables from this this particular set okay and that says that there is perfect correlation between your independent variables or your predictive variables and that's not a good thing in a regression setting like a number of regressions will not do a good job if that is the case because it is assumed that these independent variables or these predictive variables are supposed to be uncorrelated or they do not move together that's what is the assumptions so that gets violated and it actually affects um, your model interpretability um, you cannot expect a lot of the things that you you know interpret in a normal regression to be correct in high dimension if such is the case okay and another problem that you could also face is that if you use variable reduction techniques uh, through dimension reduction or feature selection you probably come down to a few set of variables which are doing a good job but it might so happen let's say with out of thousand variables you select 20x variables which are quite relevant to your model but you could also find another set of 20 variables which are doing exactly the same job what this 20 variables are doing okay and you could also find another 20 so there could be several set of variables or multiple combinations of a set of predictors which could do the same job with same efficiency and that is an issue so uh, the precaution that should be taken in such a case is that when you explain your results you should be careful about the fact that these are not the only predictors which are you know um, which which can be used to predict your target variable there could be other predictors as well you know in that way you know it will be uh, very clear when when you know somebody goes through your results otherwise if you go through a proper confidence uh, with with you know one set of variables it would be uh, somewhat biased or somewhat misleading rather okay so there could be several set of variables which could you know uh, give the same results and hence another important thing to remember is that do not uh, try to explain the uh, the residual sum of square p values r square in high dimensions now these are the statistics to be used in low dimension in high dimension 
uh, these statistics cannot be very well interpreted because what happens is that the error rate is surprisingly low in training data in high dimension uh, and the p-value could also be very misleading it could also give significant to all the you know predictive values that could also be totally totally wrong r square value will be close to one so r square could be close to one in such cases especially when p greater than n so this is a special case when the number of predictors is greater than the number of data points you have in the in the data in your training data in that case error rate will be zero and r square will be exactly of you know very close to one so that would you know indicate that it's a perfect model but that's wrong okay you cannot explain this you know traditional statistics uh, traditional matrix uh, to measure the model fitness in high dimension so that's important thing to remember then how do you validate your model how do you come up with diagnostic statistics to validate your model well the best way is to do cross validations so cross validation is very important okay cross validation is important because you will be testing your model in different data set in many test data sets and always uh, good to have a number of test data sets so that you would be you know uh, you would be in a better position to uh, say that your model is working fine even in new data sets so cross validation and using the tuning parameters like in number of modeling techniques you have tuning parameters for instance in sim case modeling techniques you have modeling parameters parameters in uh, ensemble modeling techniques you have you know uh, the tuning parameters so ensure that you use a you know a, a correct uh, tuning parameters and use cross validation uh, as one of the diagnostic statistics to validate your model so these are things to to keep in mind when we are dealing with high dimension data.